Uh, well, I thought that was a heck of a college basketball game. Obviously disappointed we, we lost. Um, but, you know, some of the credit goes to Carolina and uh, a lot of the, the credit for uh, grinding it out and, uh, was, was so short-handed. Well, Nigel went down with a, uh, I don't know what it was called, Charlie Horse or me or what have you, so he was not able to uh, play for a portion of the second half when we needed him. I thought Ja'Kai Robinson came in and gave us a nice 13 minutes of playing time. He hadn't played all year, but we needed a sub at the guard spot, and he's the one that uh, we asked to do it, and he did a, a very good job. He was a plus eight and, and uh, plus minus in the first half. We got off to a very bad start. Uh, the thing about North Carolina, they're exceptional at running the court, and they outran us in the first five minutes. We fought back at one point lead at the half, and then they came out and did the same thing. We down 10 again, fought back, and put ourselves in a position actually to win the game late. Um, just we're not able to pull it off. Jim, that kind of that streakiness, like you said, started off, you know, not so great. Do well in the second half of the first second half of the first half, and then kind of same thing repeats itself in the second half. Is that something that UNC did to you guys? Is that kind of a self-inflicted thing? Um, I'd say both. I'd say you know Carolina was able to establish their game very very quickly, and they had 15 points in, before the at before 15 minutes. Oh, 15 points in five minutes. How much is that in 40 if they kept that going? Who's got a calculator? 120. 120? Yeah. You know, so our defense got better. We got back and we started scoring. And we always play much better defense when we're scoring the ball well. Nigel hit some shots. Norshad got it going, going to the basket. And so we were able to fight back. But the second half, they came out and took control right away and called a timeout and uh, tried to get him going again. And, down 10, down 10, down 10, down 10, and then, wait a minute, we're down seven now. Uh, now we're down five, and there's only five minutes left, and we're right there, but you know, we weren't able to pull it off. What did you learn about your team? I mean, even though it's a loss, but your team did, they came back twice from big deficits, yeah. you know, I mean, and the, the defense I know, team. I know this team very, very well. The, the, the difficult part for us is uh, we're not that deep. You know, we have 11 scholarship players. You know, a lot of teams have 13. And we always have some key guy hurt. All right, today it was Keyshawn George. So you, you're always, you, you're changing your starting lineup, you're changing your, your rotation. And at this time of the year, that's really difficult. I told you Kai Robinson at the shoot around today, look at, don't be surprised if I put you in early. Because I looked at our roster and Quite frankly, he's the only guard substitute we have. A guy like uh, Christian Watson is more like a small forward, not really a, a ball handler. Uh, AJ Casey is a four man. Michael Nwako is a five. Uh, and, and Paul Jobay, he's kind of like a four man as well. So Ja'Kai was the guy we called on. He, he did a nice job, but you know, we, we need to be 100% healthy to be at our best. And I think if, if uh, uh, Keyshawn can get better and, and uh, Nigel can recover from whatever that injury was, you know, we'll, we'll be a much tougher team. Jim, on the possession with Nigel shooting the three in the closing seconds, can you talk about that possession, where you're looking for, and what do you think of the shot? Yeah, he got the switch we wanted. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, it's just up to the player to choose. And uh, he chose a long three. He's a great three-point shooter, so it's not out of character for him. Uh, was it the best shot that we could have gotten? No, probably not. But at the end of a close game like that, the one thing you don't want to do is turn the ball over. And you start running a play, and then you know, someone makes a mistake, and you turn it over. And that's a lot worse than settling for a, a Steph Curry type three. We saw Keyshawn go through some warm-up stuff, but what was kind of his What was kind of the decision of, of what do you I, think? I just uh, Sam Johnson, our trainer, just said, "Hey, the more exercise he gets for that ankle, the better. He's not able to play, but even just warming up gets that blood flowing and gets that movement back, and 
you know, he'll feel better and better as, as he progresses. So hopefully, I don't know if we'll have him this week or not, but uh, he's a tough kid and he's going to fight his way back as soon as he can. Coach, with seven games remaining, kind of just what's your outlook, you know, the rest of the season you face these guys again, a couple more big matchups down the stretch? You know, my outlook is get ready for Clemson. And that's always been my outlook. If we'd won today, it's over with. And got to get ready for Clemson. Today we lost. We've got to get ready for Clemson. That's it. Coach, yeah. do you think Carolina defended Nigel Pack any differently from the first half to the second half? And if yeah, they started hard. doubling them. <clears throat> that's why, you know, uh, some of the scoring came, came off of uh, Nigel gave it up uh, after he got double teamed. And uh, Matthew Cleveland's three that he made came off of that double team. Uh, it was un unfortunate. I, I didn't, I'm, I'll be looking forward to seeing the replay, uh, but we got the ball right at the rim. North Shed had two guys on him. He went up very strong, but I, I, what was the score at that time? Were we down two or three? What was it? Two. We were down two. How much time was left? That for 29 seconds or 20? Did you think he got hit on the way up? What? Did you think North Texas? I didn't see it. Yeah. I, I just saw a crowd, you know. So, But I, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe I'm not looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> what did you think of the defense? You guys forced uh, 16 turnovers. Yeah. Uh, 22 points off of it. But it seemed like there were some times where you guys would force a turnover and then give the ball up right back or not nail the shot and switch momentum. Just, do you think you guys have some opportunities with all those turnovers? I know this, that's very painful. You know, you do something really, really well and then you don't cash in. There were a couple of plays, I, I'll have to look at the tape. Our strategy was to keep the ball out of uh, Baycott's hands. But late in the game, we started to trap the ball screen and he rolled and our emphasis was, don't let him throw it to Baycott. And if they do throw it and get it to him, you gotta guard the heck out of him. I don't want him getting a layup or a dunk. And he got like two or three layups. That's the way he scored at the end. I don't know. I mean, yeah, he only up. had two points in the first half. Yeah. So he, he ended up with four baskets in the second half. And I'm, I'm guessing three of those were on the roll. He, he, he didn't roll and catch it and make a move. He just rolled right to the rim and he threw it right to the rim and he just laid it in. You know, any big guy can, can score like that. I thought Norshad and Michael Nwako did a great job of keeping the ball out of his hands. Any questions for Nigel and Norshad? Nigel, uh, Coach Ellis is saying that, you know, you maybe like had a Charlie horse or something that was bugging you in the second half or stuff. How much was that affecting you, and do you think that's going to be an issue going forward? Um, I mean, it shouldn't be. We have a great training staff with, with Sam Johnson, you know, in my corner, and he really does a good job helping me get through injuries and nagging pain and things like that. So. I'm going to go see him, spend a lot of time with him, and you know, make sure I get ready for the next game. What is the injury? What exactly? And when did you feel it? Honestly, I can't really tell you like what exactly it is. It's just something with my knee was hurting. Um, but you know, they did a good job of helping me, getting me through the game, and then now you know, spending a lot of time with them, making sure to you know, get it back to feeling really good. You know, so we traveled to Clemson this week. How much did that affect you in the second half? Uh, it was just kind of nagging. It was kind of irritating. Um, obviously, it was in, in a lot of pain at first. Um, they were able to help me out. And, um, I was able to push through it, you know, fight through the pain and be able to finish the game. You guys went on a 19-5 run, mainly the two of you, in the first half. Can you just talk about that comeback that you guys had? Because it looked like, you know, it looked kind of hopeless for a while, and then all of a sudden you guys led that 19-5 charge to, to take the lead in the, in the going into halftime. Norchad. You got it. Can you hear the question? Yeah, just how were you guys able to come back? Uh, you guys were trailing by 12, and you know you went on a, on a big run, the two of you in particular. Yeah, I just think basketball is a game of runs, you know. They went on a run, we came, you know, we heard a coach had talked to us in that timeout, and you know, we pick it up. He told us, uh, you know, that <laughs> his team came to play after that timeout. So, yeah, we just, you know, pulled together and played my own basketball. And, and uh, Nigel, I want to ask you about the last shot. Can you just talk us through the, the final three there that when you had a chance to tie it? Um, you know, we, we came down, we, we went and played a ball screen, and we seen the switch. Um, I was feeling the rhythm. I seen him, you know, kind of retreating back on his heels. I just took the shot, I had confidence in it, just didn't make it.
Nigel, Ellie could have finished with 19 points, 8 assists. Just in what ways was he a challenging player to go up against? Yeah, we knew coming to the game he was a really good player. I mean, everybody in this conference, um, especially if you go to North Carolina as well, he was a really good player. He came in and played with a lot of confidence. He's a really good player. Um, he's able to get downhill and you know, create for his teammates as well. Um, they have a really good team. He's got to be better. Norwich had grown up against um, Baycott. Uh, he did very well defending him. Just what was it like defending him? What, what worked so well against him? You know, like the game plan that the coaches give us, deny him the ball, you know, front him, deny, like, I got help from my teammates in the back, so just, you know, execute the game plan. As you know, not the result you wanted, but what positives can you take away from a game like this, you know, the final stretch of the season against a really good team? Yeah, it just shows, you know, we were to bounce back from, you know, a really tough loss in Virginia. Um, I forgot what they're ranked three. They're three, three. Yeah. yeah. so it shows, you know, we can play with, you know, really any good team in the country and, you know, we got to put games better and we got to do better putting it together for the full 40 minutes, but it just gave us confidence to show that these guys are number three and we were able to play, you know, neck and neck with them towards the end. So um, it just gives us confidence within ourselves to go out and play hard for, for the rest of the season because there's a chance. Nigel, the, the lobby through the North side in the first half, off the DHO, was that like part of the play or just one of the reads that, that you made off that? Just more of a read, honestly. We knew, you know, I'm kind of reading the defender what he's going to do next. North set a good screen to, to get me open, so he had to, you know, choose whether he's going to let me shoot the jump shot or was he going to play North Chat. And he kind of he was trying to play both, and North Chat was able to, you know, get behind him. And once I see that, I know I can throw a lot up to him. Can you talk about the, the crowd and the atmosphere? I mean, there were there were a lot of Carolina fans there too. So it was loud when they scored, louder when you guys scored. Just what was it like playing in, in a full building like that with that atmosphere? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's kind of what you look up to, what you what you play for. It was a lot of fun. You know, to have our fans behind us and cheering for us, and the student section was, you know, rowdy from the jump. Even during the national anthem, they were they were ready for yeah. the game to start. So <laughs> that's really fun to play with that behind us. Um, they have, they had their fans to come out as well, so they gave them a boost. Kind of almost felt like a neutral site game so it was a lot of fun like one of those tournament games almost so it's a lot of fun to have our fans you know juiced up behind us and we're looking forward to seeing it again this year next, next game against Clemson just what lessons did you learn about them from the first game they're a great team I know we got to prepare good because every team in this conference is good you know we executed the right stuff last time we played them we get the dub so you know you're just going you know see what how they adjusted during the season and you know just get a new game plan and go with it. Hubert, what, what did you see from your guys in the second half and specifically the way you tried to approach Pack and Omir because they had obviously gotten really hot in the first half. It seemed like you were able to, to limit them pretty effectively in the second half. Well, I think for Omir, I think um, there were two things uh, to be able to defend him. I thought Armando really stepped up in the second half and really worked hard um, to make it hard for him to catch the ball where he wants to. I thought he did a good job on his dribble drives, didn't give him low post position, um, didn't foul him, put him on the free throw line. And then also there's another way you can defend him. You can go at him on the offensive end. In the second half, Armando was more aggressive. And because he was so aggressive, he got a mirror in foul trouble, and it's easier to defend him when he's on the bench. Um, in terms of regards to pack, we just, uh, anytime, any DHO, any ball screen, we just two put, put two guys on him. We just doubled him. Um, he just had to try something different, make somebody else make a play, somebody else make a shot, because he was just in a rhythm in the first half. And um, we just had to try something um, different, and, and it took him out of his rhythm, and it really worked for us. With Elliott, uh, Duke and Clemson sort of played off him a little bit, took away some of the driving space, daring him to shoot. Miami was when I'm guarding him. Garden on the perimeter, kind of open up that drive. Is that what enabled him to be more aggressive? Was there a conversation you had with him about being more aggressive with the ball? Because he got to the rim a lot in the first half and also opened up some of those shots. Well, I mean, that, you know, he's elite in terms of being able to get get to the basket. He just is. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of defense. Um, his ability to be able to get to the paint, be able to score, distribute, is just at a high level. And so, you know, one of the things that Miami does consistently defensively, you know, their hard heads just causes us a lot of problems, you know, and it's just, it's hard to get into the pain. I just felt like um, Elliot was really persistent at attacking and trying to get there. So much so, not just for him, for everybody else. You know, we got into the penalty in the second half with 12 minutes to go, and I really thought that was, a, even though we didn't shoot free throws as well as 
we normally do, I felt like that was a huge impact for us. He, he, had, had, he, had, he had had three since December. He had one today. He had two today. He had two today. How does that change things if he can just knock down? Well, oh, that, that changes a lot, you know. I mean, there were um, wide open threes, and, you know, I told him, when you're wide open, have the confidence to be able to knock it down because your head coach has the confidence and think it's going down, so shoot it. And, um, those two threes that he had, I th I think, were they both in the second half or one in the first half one and one in the second half? Bench. It was just really huge for us. We needed everything that we could uh, to be able to win against Miami here on the road. Deaver, how much of a feeling of relief maybe is there? You guys had a pretty comfortable lead in the second half and, and kind of held on. Yeah, I mean, I I like 20-point wins. That would be great, you know, but, you know, we just, Miami's a really good team and we haven't had very much success against them of of late and especially here and so because of their athleticism and their ability to score at a number of different positions we always know that no lead is safe and they continue to fight and we made a couple more plays down the stretch to be able to pull out the win. Does it seem like RJ had more space offensively was it the way that they were defending him or just the, the way you were running the offense? I don't, I don't know if he had more space I, I know RJ is working real hard to to get open, I, I just, I don't, I feel bad what I ask and require of him every day. And again, I've said this before, I haven't seen every player uh, in the country, but it'd be hard for me to think anybody um, that is playing any better than RJ. Um, not only does he hit big shots, he was the one, the primary defender on, uh, on pack. So we're asking him to defend the best perimeter player, to score, distribute, rebound, take care of the basketball. And every day in practice and games, he shows up. He's just one of those special type players that um, that you just filled with thankfulness just to be able to be around him and coach and that he's a part of our team and program. Have you seen a six foot guy like him hit the floor as much as he does every game? He does hit the floor. Um, Maybe you could say that to get him some more free throws because he's, he's just a great free throw shooter. But, you know, he's, he, he gets into the lane. He, he doesn't shy away from contact, and that allows him to be effective on the offensive end. But, again, you can't get any tougher. It doesn't matter six feet. You, gotta, you don't measure his height. You measure his heart. And there's nobody in the country that has a bigger heart than R.J. Davis. Peter, you were the perspective of the, uh, from the perspective of the players, what did you like more about, I guess, the approach going into this game? I know yesterday you said that you liked the practices more, you know, kind of in the last couple of days. What did you kind of like more about the approach that going into this game? I did. You know, I said you know, yesterday there's, there's no correlation. As a player and as a coach, I, I, I've had great practices, and then I've been horrible in the game, and I've been horrible at practices, and I was lights out in the game, and I've seen that with the team. I just specifically was answering a question in regards to that we had two good days of practice, um, that it translated um, out there in the game today. That's great, and we needed it. We needed everybody to step up, and I feel like everyone that played made at least one impactful play that helped us get a road win. Hubert, last one. Go ahead. Because Elliott is so hard on himself, you know, you, you can see him beating himself up at times. Do you, as a coach, try to approach him any differently from that standpoint? Like, are you building him up any more? Yeah, I mean, I, look, I, that's the number one reason, not one of the many reasons why I tell everybody, I can't coach you unless I know you and you can't play for me unless you know me. And so we gotta spend a lot of time together. That's why I require them to stop by the office during the week so we can talk about anything other than basketball so that they can know me and I can get to know them. And so the reason why I say that is, like, you hold everybody to the same foundation, the same standard of what this program has always been about, but everybody's different. And so you're right, you know, there's some guys on the team that I'm straightforward and direct, but you may have to go five miles out to make your point and hug them and encourage them. And there's some guys you can go straightforward at them. It's all about how you can get each individual player to respond in a positive way. And if that means give them a hug and say, that's okay, let's just do better next time. Or if it means go into them, it is what it is. But because we have a relationship, whether I, whatever way I say it, they know where it's coming from. And it's coming from how much I care and how much I love them. So Thanks. hug Elliot. I, I, can, I, I can do a combination with Elliot. <laughs> yeah, he gets both. <laughs> He's Thanks. a rare, he gets both. Thanks everybody.